हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू आईटीएलएस एकेडमी एम्पावर द यूथ सो टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वील गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद एनालिटिकल टेक्निक्स टॉपिक वन दैट इज माइक्रोस्कोपी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोपी वी विल गोइंग टू डिस्कस वॉट इज कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप एंड वॉट इज अ फेस कॉन्ट्रास्ट माइक्रोस्कोप वी विल सी द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ बोथ द माइक्रोस्कोप as well as the working principle of both the microscope and what are their applications in different field of industries so let's get start with the topic and let's see what is microscope so if we see the definition of microscope that what is a microscope a microscope is an instrument that makes an enlarged image of a small object thus revealing details too small to be seen by unaided eye the most familiar kind of microscope is the optical microscope which uses visible light focused through the lenses so if we see this definition so in short if we understand the definition so it is said that microscope it is a device or you can say it is an instrument what is the purpose of using this instrument is to make a image a little bit larger or you can say enlarge the image those image that you cannot see with your naked eyes let's take an example to understand this we all are surrounded with different types of microorganisms isn't it and those microorganisms are so much you can say so tiny that you cannot see with your naked eyes but if you take a sample of anything and you keep that sample under the microscope you can easily see the presence of bacteria or presence of any sort of microorganisms so to solve this purpose of enlarging the images of a small object this microscope is used in different industries it has different applications but the most important application is in the food industries in pharma industries as well as in any microbiological lab so it <clears throat> the it uses the light and with the help of this light the object is visible now comes what does microscope means means from where this microscope term came into existence what does it word mean and um, let's see what is this so the word microscope come from the latin that is microscopium which is derived from the greek word micros meaning small and scopein meaning to look at so it came from a latin word that is a microscopium and this microscopium it is derived from a greek word that is micros so micros it simple have a meaning that is it is small and scopein it is to look at means if you see this definition you can definitely understand this this microbes means is small whereas this scopein means to look at so these are these microscope it totally do justice with this definition that those my small object that you cannot see with your unaided eyes so with the help of this microscope you can easily see this small object example different types of microorganism now comes the functions of microscope so somewhat this is how a microscope in general look like and you must have seen in your schools in your colleges that this kind of microscope are used in the laboratory to perform the experiment so microscope it is a tool that produces a enlarged image of a small object allowing the observer to have an exceeding close view of a minute structure in a slide it is primarily used for exam um, examinatic means it is a tool <coughs> as already we have discussed it is a type of a device or tool or instrument whatever you want to say 
and it is basically used to enlarge the images of the small object okay so here you can see this place here you place your slide like this this is type of a slide and on this slide you place um, your sample on this and you keep it here and uh, through this eyepiece you take a look of this small creature now let's move further and let's see the microscopic components a compound microscope is a high power microscope that has a higher magnification level than a low power or desiccation microscope it is used to examine tiny specimen like cell structure that cannot be viewed at a lower magnification level the compound microscope is made up of both structural and optical component so if you see the component of the microscope so if we just take an example of a compound microscope so it has a very high power micro it is a very high power microscope and because of this high power it has a higher magnification level means you can easily see a small um, object image in a very uh, larger form and uh, because of this high power it has a higher magnification level so it is basically uh, used to examine tiny specimen like cell we all know that that cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life and cell is a, they are so so tiny that you cannot see with your naked eyes so you need certain device to visualize cell and this microscope is a device that is used to examine the cell so a compound microscope if we talk about the compound microscope so it is basically uh, made up of two uh, component that is a structural and optical the three basic structural components are the head arm and base if you see this structure so it this is a arm this is the base okay so this is uh, sorry uh, yeah three structure are there so this is this is part is the head part this is the hand part and this is the uh, the lower part is the uh, base part <clears throat> now moving to uh, the detail of the head arm and base so the body or a head comprises the optical part present in the upper part of the microscope so if we if we see this uh, uh, microscope let me erase everything now this is the upper part so this is known as the head and this is the optical part sometime head is also known as optical part why because from here only you visualize the images so this is the optical part and since it has a lens also and because of the presence of lenses and because of the because from here only you visualize the uh, different types of objects so uh, this is the head or the optical part and the first part of the microscope now this is the arm from where you hold the uh, microscope or you can uh, say you sub give support uh, to the microscope and it is basically it has a connection between head and the base this is the base so base is this it is the resting uh, um, um, uh, of the microscope okay so the arm connect and support the base and head of the microscope also it is used to carry the microscope base of the microscope it support the microscope and comprises the illuminator now coming to the next that is the optical part of the microscope so if we see the optical part of the microscope so it has four or five things that is first is the eyepiece second is the eye tube third is the objective lenses and fourth is the nose piece then it has adjust um, adjustable or you can say adjustment knob then it has stage seven set uh, uh, it has a illuminator third a uh, eighth point says it has a condenser and condenser focus knob and last it has a diaphragm so if we see the first part that is the eye piece 
so it is um it is what an absorber look through um, through and it is present in the upper portion of the microscope that we have already discussed then comes the eye tube so eye tube it it is a somewhat a claps uh, the eye pieces which are pos uh, positioned above the objective lenses then what are objective lenses sometimes in examination or in the interviews this questions generally arises that what do you understand by the objective lenses so the objective lenses they are the main optical lenses so it ranges in various magnification means these are certain yeah, some uh, very main optical lenses and um, it um, uh, the range uh, of uh, this uh, objective uh, lenses ranges from uh, 4 uh, 4x to 100x and generally it included 3 to 5 lenses <coughs> on a single microscope <coughs> sorry so this is a objective lens so there are magnification uh, ring, um, power uh, or you can say the range it may varies from 4x to 100x and in a single microscope they generally uses three or five types of lenses then comes the nose piece it is a houses the objective lenses then again this part is very important that what is the adjustment knob so adjustment knob what does uh, its basic uh, uh, use so it often it is used to focus the microscope it is used to focus the microscope then stage the stage it is a place or you can say a platform uh, where the specimen is to be viewed the mechanical stage is often used when the working of the on the specimen at a higher magnification this is when the delicate uh, movement of the specimen is required then comes the illuminator <coughs> since its name suggests illuminator means a light source so illuminator it acts as a light source and it is typically um, located at the microscope base condenser and condenser focus knob it is typically used to gather and focus the illuminator light into the specimen diaphragm so diaphragm it is a um, uh, it is also known as iris so what does it do so diaphragm regulates the amount of light that reaches the specimen it is situated above the condenser but beneath the stage so this is about uh, the <coughs> optical part of the microscope it uh, generally um, comes in the examination so you must be aware of all the optical uh, parts sometimes what they do in the examination they give you a image of a microscope and they ask you to label each part of the microscope and uh, by labeling you can also they all they may also ask you the functions uh, that are related to each part now comes the type of microscope so type of microscope basically there are different types of microscope depending upon their work and depending upon their uses so if we see microscope is classified into firstly two part that is light microscope and second is the electron microscope then further the light microscope it is divided into two part that is compound microscope and the uh, second is the stereo microscope then comes the uh, compound microscope so compound microscope they um, they are uh, classified uh, sorry the light microscope it is further uh, classified into compound and stereo whereas the electron microscope it is divided into scanning uh, electron microscope and uh, tra tra transmission electron microscope so basically um, this is a very important part that is SEM and TEM SEM is scanning electron microscope and TEM is the transmission electron microscope now let's quickly see what is a compound microscope so compound microscope says a fine slice or a section of a specimen required light passes through a specimen image appeared 
appears too deep, stains are often required to see the detail. Then comes the stereo microscope. So the whole whole or a part of the specimen can be viewed. Light bounces off the uh, surface of the specimen. Image appears 3D and viewed with a natural color. So here in the compound microscope, the image that is appeared it is a 2d image whereas if you see that uh, uh, stereo microscope so the image that is appeared is a 3d image so if we see the compound microscope so compound microscope it need certain type of stain uh, to see the uh, detail whereas uh, if you see the uh, uh, stereo microscope so uh, they uh, they are viewed with the natural color <clears throat> then comes the scanning microscope so the scanning microscope electron microscope says the whole uh, whole or a part of the specimen can be viewed electron bounces off the surface and are they are detected so the image appeared here is 3d image image uh, in the gray scale but can be colored so here the um, uh, type of a image is a 3d image sometimes the uh, image it is uh, in a gray scale but you uh, means in a gray in color or you can say they can be colored by using different types of strain then comes the temp so uh, this says a very fine section of the specimen required um, and uh, uh, in this electron the uh, uh, they are passed passed through and interact with the specimen and uh, here the image is appeared in the 2d form uh, dimension and uh, again in this also the image is in the gray scale but can be colored later by using different type of stain now let's discuss about the light microscope in detail if you see this diagram it is a diagram of the light microscope that is a stereo microscope so these uh, are these are the basic microscope that is used light to magnify the image so in this light is used and uh, how this light uh, works they magnify the object means uh, any uh, um, object like cell or bacteria or anything so the lenses in these microscope reflect the light of the object beneath uh, them to appear closer the different types of light or optical microscopes are compound microscope and second is a simple microscope third is a dissection or stereo microscope the so further it is divided into three types compound simple and stereo stereo is also known as this uh, dissection microscope now comes <clears throat> sorry now comes the first part that is a compound microscope that uh, what is a compound microscope and let's see the definition so the compound microscope it is divided uh, it is defined as a microscope with a high resolution and they generally uses two set of lenses providing a 2d image of the sample so basically um, they are uh, these type of microscope is also known as a high resolution microscope and uh, basically they uses two type of uh, lenses and uh, at the end they provide a 2d image of the sample so the term compound refers to the uh, usage of more than uh, one uh, lens in the microscope also the compound microscope is one of the type of the optical microscope and other type of optical microscope is a simple microscope so generally you just have to know the definition so this definition is very important that uh, what is a microscope so microscope it is a high resolution and uh, basically it uh, uses two lenses and uh, at last they give a 2d image now this is a diagram of the compound microscope so if you see this part let me yes sorry just want uh, yeah so 
if you see this compound uh, diagram of a compound microscope so the first one is the eyepiece so this part is what it is a eyepiece from where you visualize basically your object this is the body tube this is a revolving nose piece this part this is a objective lens and you we have already discussed that objective lenses it depends uh, it um, have different types of resolution starting from 4x to the 100x this is a condenser this is a mirror for the reflection and this is the base this is the inclination joint this is a fine adjustment knob you can adjust and do the adjustment from here this is a coarse adjustment knob that you can also use this to adjust the focus so it is said that the invention of compound microscope was done by a dutch spectacle maker zurich zenation in early 1590 so um, uh, this microscope was uh, first discovered uh, by a duck uh, sorry dutch uh, spectacle uh, maker a person who makes spectacles uh, his uh, name was zoration zarishan in early 1590 however there are no records that uh, that support the zoration use this microscope he just invented this but there is no studies that claim that he uses it he has just invented now comes the most important part of uh, this segment that is the working principle of compound microscope a compound microscope is considered to be one of the standard microscope that can be used for the general purposes the arrangement of the lens is such that it is magnifies the object from the complex system there are two types of lenses that are used in the compound microscope the first one is the objective lens that is placed close to the object that needs to be examined whereas the eyepiece is another that allows the image to be viewed the eyepiece it is also known as ocular lenses so this compound microscope um, it is considered that it is uh, one of the most standard type of a microscope and it is basically used for the general purposes like in your inst institute or in your schools in uh, performing different type of exam uh, experiments so here it uh, uses two type of lenses the first one is the object uh, objective lens and second is your uh, ocular lens this <coughs> ocular lens it is also known as eyepiece so what the work is of the objective lens is uh, it is used to examine the object whereas eyepiece it allows the image to be viewed then the light is uh, meant to pass through the thin transparent object the magnified image of the object is obtained by the objective lens so this image is uh, known as the real image the eyepiece or the ocular lens then magnifies the real image and they are viewed as a virtual image so when it comes from the objective lens it is known as real image and uh, by using this uh, real image uh, the eyepiece uh, it uh, magnifies the real images uh, and it is viewed as the virtual image the compound microscope it, it is also known as bright field microscope uh, so the another name of compound microscope is known as the bright field microscope and uh, what does it work so because of the light passes directly through the uh, uh, through the light sources uh, to the eye yet to uh, of the lenses this mechanism makes the uh, field of vision brightly and illuminated so because the image is so bright so it is also known as bright field uh, microscope now comes the function of compound microscope now <clears throat> if we see the function so it simply um, simplifies the study of viruses and bacteria that we have already discussed that uh, the basic functions behind the use of microscope is to visualize those object or those creature that uh, creature cannot be viewed uh, from uh, by your naked eyes so you need different type of uh, Uh, object uh, machines or instrument to visualize and those uh, machine or instrument is known as microscope so the first uh, says it simplifies the study of viruses and bacteria 
दे आर यूज इन पैथोलॉजी लैब टू मेक एन ईजी डायग्नोसिस ऑफ डिजीजेस सो दे आर यूज इन द लैब्स टू यू नो डायग्नोज डायग्नोज वेरियस टाइप ऑफ डिजीजेस एंड दे आर ऑल्सो यूज इन फोरेंसिक लैब्स टू आइडेंटिफाई ह्यूमन फिंगर प्रिंट्स एंड इट हैज लॉट ऑफ वर्क वेन यू वॉन्ट टू आइडेंटिफाई एनी वन सो फिंगर प्रिंट्स ह्यूमन फिंगर प्रिंट्स टू टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस टाइप ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोप इज यूज बहुत सिंपल एज वेल एज द कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप सो दे कैन बी यूज फॉर द माइक्रो बायोलॉजिकल स्टडीज लाइक फंचाई एलगी देन माइक्रोस्कोप कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज टू स्टडी द सोइल पार्टिकल्स now at the end let's see uh, sorry let's see what is the advantages and disadvantages of compound microscope so if you see the advantages of compound microscope so due to the usage of multiple lenses one can be obtain detailed information about the sample these microscope have their own source of light this microscope is user friendly and easy to handle so these are the advantages of the compound microscope so what comes the disadvantages so the magnification of sample is possible only to the certain extent means uh, uh, up to the certain extent only you can um, uh, you know uh, uh, magnify you can what you can do you can just magnify fire the object of the object and um, uh, sorry extent once this limit is reached the sample cannot be viewed so this is basically the disadvantages of the compound microscope now comes our next type of microscope that is a phase contrast microscopy so before understanding this what is a phase contrast microscopy let us discuss who is the scientist so a dutch physicist uh, Fritz Zinke uh, is the scientist who was first uh, uh, invented uh, this type of microscope so phase contrast microscope it uh, is an optical microscope and uh, this uh, optical microscope uh, it uh, uses this microscopy technique and it converts the phase shift in the light passing through the transparent specimen to the brightness changes in the images phase contrast microscopy is a technique that is used for gaining contrast in the translucent specimen without staining the specimen now this is somewhat a phase contrast microscopy look like if you see the first part of this <coughs> diagram then it simply says that it is a objective lenses so this is what the objective lenses that it has a face plate lens and direct light that is a face shifted then second part is here uh, you can see this slide so there you can place your specimen so when com light comes so uh, direct light comes here and the light gets scattered then the third one it is a condenser lens so a lens that is placed between uh, behind us and this is the condenser lens this is what this uh, ring uh, like a structure it is known as angular <coughs> link uh sorry ring and the last is the light source so this is the light source so in examination they can also uh, give you this type of a diagram like this and you have to label each uh, part of the diagram this is somewhat how a uh, phase contrast microscope look like now let's see the working principle of the contrast micro phase contrast microscopy so when the light passes through the cell small phase shift occurs so whenever any light is passes passes through the cell so the uh, shifting of the phase take place which are invisible to human eye means these uh, uh, shifts they are very much invisible to human eye so in a phase contrast microscope so these phase shift they are converted into uh, changes in amplitude which can be observed as differences in the image contrast 
Now comes the working principle of the phase contrast microscopy. So, the partial coherent illumination produced by a tungsten halogen lamp. So, in this uh, tungsten halogen lamp is used to produce illumination. So, which is directed through a collector lenses and focused on a specialized annulus that is positioned in the substage condenser front local plane. Wave uh, front passing through the aluminis illuminate the specimen and either passes through the undeviated or, uh, or are uh, diff uh, diffracted and are uh, retarded by in a phase by the structure and phase gradient present in the specimen. Un, uh, unviewed, undiverted or as a differentiated light collected by the lens, they are what they does, they get segregated at the real focal plane by the phase plate and focus the intermediate image plane to form the final phase contrast image observed in the eyepieces. Now comes the advantages of the phase contrast microscopy. So this advantages so basically they are used to visualize living cells they can be observed in the natural state uh, without uh, previous fixation or labeling it makes a uh, it makes a highly transparent object or more visible no special preparation or fixation or staining etc is needed to study an object under the phase contrast microscope which saves a lot of time Examining the intercellular component of living cell at a relatively higher uh, resolution. Example, the dynamic mortality of micro, mitochondria, mitotic micro, uh, microscope, or sorry, chromosome and vacuoles. It is made possible for the biologists to study living cells and how the, they proliferate through the cell division. So it has a great advantages in uh, biology. Why? Because it make, uh, made it possible for different type of biologists uh, to study the living cell and uh, how these cells, uh, you know, living cells, they get proliferated through the cell division. Now comes the application of the phase contrast microscopy. So to produce a high contrast uh, images of the transparent specimens such as living cells, and uh, they have a great uh, uh, application in my uh, examination of microorganism like different type like viruses bacteria then uh, it is also used in examination of thin uh, tissue slices uh, lithographic patterns fibers latex respiration glass fragments subcellular particles so all these application of phase contrast microscopy in biological research are numerous now there is certain disadvantage or you can say the limitation of the phase contrast microscope. The first limitation is the phase contrast from micro uh, condensers and objective lenses at considerable cost to the microscope. And so the phase contrast is often not used in teaching labs except perhaps in classes in the health profession. So because of the presence of this objective lenses and can, uh, uh, face contrast condenser so it makes the cost uh, relatively high so because of the high cost of uh, this type of microscope that cannot be used in uh, the school so whenever there is uh, a classes related to the health profession so where uh, this microscope is used to use face contrast uh, contrast the light path must be aligned so this is again one limitation and the last is generally more light is needed for the phase contrast than for corresponding bright field viewing since the technique is based on the dissemination of the brightness of the most objects. So this comes to the end of the lecture. I hope you have understood the lecture. If you have any doubt students related to <coughs> any of the part of the lecture you can simply leave all your queries in the comment section below if i receive any query so in the next lecture of analytical technique i'll be answering all your queries so please leave your query in the comment section below thank you for watching and yes don't forget to subscribe itls academy 
you can visit our website that is www.itlsacademy.com this is our helpline number that is 7080833450 you can simply call on this number and uh, in uh, on youtube don't forget to press the bell icon to get more updates on different type of lectures and you can follow itls academy on twitter instagram facebook youtube whatsapp linkedin and you can also get our app uh, uh, on uh, google uh, google play thank you for watching please do like share and subscribe thank you